To recap, we have shaded almost the whole cupcake model. What we are left with is the syrup topping. What is interesting about it is that it also lets light in like the subsurface material but it is also transparent because it is a liquid. To make the material transparent, we need to go to its settings and crank up the transmission value to 1. That way, light is refracted through the object. The next thing is to match the color. Don't mind what you see in the diffuse slot, focus more on the render preview. Ending up with a very saturated color is fine as long as it looks good rendered. Also, from reference, we see that it should be much shinier than it is now, which means we should lower the roughness. One last thing to adjust before we move on is the IOR, or index of refraction. Every material has a specific IOR, and while it isn't a big deal in opaque materials, it can make a big difference for refractive materials. Basically, the IOR will dictate whether you're making water, glass or any other liquid. For this, I will use a value of 1.33, which is close to the value of water. With another look at the reference image, we can see that where the syrup is thicker, it is also darker and much more dense, while the thinner it gets, the more light shines through it. This is where the volume input of the material node comes into play. If we search for volume in the Add menu, we can see that there are a few options. The Volume Scatter node, the Volume Absorption node, and the principled volume shader. My advice is to use the principled volume shader as it's a newer node that also has the functionality of the other two. Let's plug it in the volume and see if it does anything. There's not much to see, but that is because the density is way too low. The volume shader is usually made to simulate fog or aerial perspective in large environments. So if we want to make it work for the syrup, we really need to crank up the density. I'm going with around 800 for this. The other thing we need to match is the color. Copying the base color from the surface material should do the job just fine. The rest of the settings come in handy when making an environment scene and we will cover them in another series. Now to recap, we figure out what IOR and transmission are for and also how to create interesting volumetric effects for our shaders. Now it's time to start setting up our shot and build up its lighting, but I will continue with that in the next video. Also, if you have skipped some of the previous steps but wish to follow along from here, you can get all the project files for this tutorial series from the link in the description below. I'll also be adding some bonus videos in there if anyone wants to speed up their learning process. Subscribe for more tutorials and see you in the next episode.